Welcome to this Wisel Excel VBA tutorial. In the third part of this series on writing SQL for Excel files, we're going to look at how you can select the top n rows from a table. We'll start with a quick look at where you add the top keyword to an existing query and use that to select a specific number of rows from a table. We'll then look at how you can use the order by clause to influence which rows appear at the top of the result set. We'll explain what happens when your rows include tied values and how you can remove the tied results. And in the final part of the video, we'll look at how we can return a percentage of rows from a table. So let's get started. The setup for this video is basically the same as for the previous two parts of the series. We've got a macro enabled workbook with some VBA code that allows us to run a query to return data from a separate file called movies. The movies workbook has a bunch of different worksheets and tables containing information about a variety of films. And I've got both of these workbooks saved in the same folder and I'll drop a link in the video description so that you can download the same files and follow along writing the code if you'd like to. I've written a bunch of code already in the selecting top end rows workbook and most of this relies on Microsoft ActiveX data objects. I'm not going to talk about ActiveX data objects in detail in this video. This series is meant to focus on the SQL side of things. Just in case you are interested and you've not done this before, we have a bunch of other videos which explain how to get up and running with ActiveX data objects. I'd recommend starting with this one, how do I get data from a closed Excel file using VBA if you're interested. Just to give you a basic idea of what the code does, if I head back to the Visual Basic Editor for the Selecting Top N Rows workbook, um, when we click on the Run Query button, it triggers this subroutine, which has a basic select statement written inside it. So a select everything from the film worksheet in the movie's workbook. That query gets passed into the Get Query Results subroutine. And this is the one that establishes the connection to the movie workbook. It creates a record set and uses our SQL query to set the source of that record set. Then there's a whole bunch of extra code that will grab the column headers and write those into a new worksheet, write the data into a worksheet, and then do a whole bunch of tidying up and formatting. I've even written some error handlers so that things shouldn't go wrong too often. And at least if they do go wrong, then the, uh, the whole system falls over gracefully rather than just flat on its face. I'm sure you can break it if you're really determined, but anyway, it should suffice for our basic queries that we're going to write. So really in this video, the only line of code we're going to change is this one here that writes our SQL select statement. So at the moment, all our query does is returns every single row and column from the film worksheet in the movie's workbook. Just to demonstrate that that works, if I head back to the menu sheet in selecting top n rows, click the run query button, we return a brand new worksheet consisting of everything from the same worksheet or the film worksheet in the movie's workbook. What I'd like to do now is change this so that we only select, say, the top five films from that list. And to do that, we can make a modification to our select statement. So far in the previous two parts of the series, we've written the select list, the from clause, and the order by clause in our select statement. What we can do now is include an extra modifier to the select keyword. We can add the words top, followed by the number of rows that we want to return. So to make that work, let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And after the select keyword, we can say top, followed by the number five. Having done that, I can head back to the menu sheet in the workbook, click the Run Query button again, and we do indeed get just the first five rows from that table of films. It's probably worth mentioning that you can enter a number of rows that's greater than the number of rows available. So for example, our film table contains only 1200 films. If I head down to the bottom of the film worksheet, 1200 rows of data plus the one row for the column headers. If I enter a number that's far greater than that, it doesn't matter, the query will still work. If I go back to the Visual Basic Editor, let's try to return 5,000 rows. If I go back to my menu sheet at this point, click the Run Query button, I can only possibly return a maximum of 1,200, so that's all I get. Selecting the top rows from a list becomes more useful when you start sorting the query results. And we can do that by applying the Order By clause to our query. So let's say, for example, we wanted to show the top five longest films in our database. To do that, we can apply the order by clause to the runtime column and then return the top five rows from that. So let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor and then we'll reduce the number of rows we're returning back down to five. And then we'll apply the order by clause 
and specify that we want to order by the run time column in descending order so that the longest films appear at the top of the list. Having done that, if I head back to the menu sheet and click my run query button, I'll get the top five longest films from the entire table. If we want to get the five shortest films from the list, we can simply change the order of the results so that the films are sorted in ascending order of runtime so the shortest ones will be at the top. So there isn't a bottom keyword that we can use to do this. It's all based on changing the sort order of the results. Let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor and I can change the sort order from descending to ascending either by changing the word DESC to the word ASC or simply omitting that part entirely. But I like to show my intentions there, so I'm going to use the ASC keyword. And then if I go back to my menu sheet and run my query again, I'll get the five shortest films from the top of the list, including one additional film as well. The reason we're getting six rows rather than just the five that we've asked for is because the provider that we're using to return data from an Excel workbook automatically includes tied results in the column that you've sorted by. So we asked for the top five, the fifth film in the runtime column has a value of 75, and the sixth row is also tied with that same value. Now this is contrary to the behavior you might expect if you're familiar with writing code in, for example, Transact SQL in SQL Server. If you wanted to get the tied results, you have to explicitly say you want the results with ties. But that's the opposite behavior for the provider we're using to connect to Excel. We can see the same behavior um, even more clearly if we try to do something like, let's say we want to select the top one film with the lowest number of Oscar wins. The lowest number of Oscar wins is zero, but that value is shared by an enormous number of results in this database. So if we head back to the Visual Basic Editor, we can say, give me the top one row from the film table ordered by Oscar wins. And we'll go in ascending order so that zero will be the first value. And if we head back to the menu sheet and then click the run query button again, we get a huge number of results based on all the films with a tied value for the first row in the Oscar wins column. If we want to exclude the tied results from our query, we can add another column to the order by clause, which acts as a tiebreaker. Let's first of all change our sort order to show the most successful films at the top of the list, so the ones with the most Oscar wins. I can do that simply by heading back to the Visual Basic Editor and changing the sort order of Oscar wins from ascending to descending. If I head back to my menu sheet now and run the query again, I'll see that there are three films with a shared maximum value of 11 for the Oscar wins. Now let's say that I want to see only the most recent film which has that number of Oscar wins. If I add a second sort order to order in descending order of release date, there is only one single film with the maximum value of 17th of December 2003, so that acts as a tiebreaker. It's the combination of all the columns in the order by clause which determines the uniqueness of the results. So if I head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and after I've sorted by Oscar wins in descending order, I'm going to type in a comma and then in some square brackets say release date, also in descending order. And then if I head back to my menu sheet and run my query again, because there's only one film with the, this unique combination of Oscar wins and release date, I return only that one single film. Now, of course, if it just so happened that there were multiple films released on the same date with the same number of Oscar wins, then we'd be returning those multiple results as well. So the most reliable type of tiebreaker field to use is some kind of unique identifier. In this example, we have a film ID column and the number in the film ID column is unique for every single row in that table. So a fairly reliable way to ensure you definitely only get one single result is to apply your second sort to the unique film ID field or the unique identifier field, which is film ID in this case. And if I run my query again, we'll once again get just one single result. If I head back to my menu sheet, when I click run query, but this time it's based on the film ID. So it's Ben Hur rather than Lord of the Rings. There is one other way that we can modify the top keyword. Rather than asking for a specific number of rows, we can ask to return a percentage of the rows from the table. Just to demonstrate that, I'm going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor. 
and I'm just going to take away the order by clause. In fact, I'm just going to comment it out for the time being. So I'm going to type in a single quote in front of the order by clause and then close my query after the name of the table. So rather than selecting the top one from the film table, I'm going to ask to say select the top 1%. So we write the literal word percent rather than the percentage symbol. So there are 1200 films in the entire film worksheet. If I head back to my menu sheet at this point and click run query, the number of rows I return is exactly 12. I can do the same thing when I include the order by clause. So let's reintroduce the order by clause to sort in descending order of just the Oscar wins field. If I head back to the visual basic editor, I'm just going to take away that extra closed double quote and remove my comment out character. And then I'm just going to make sure that I'm only sorting in descending order of Oscar wins for the time being. So I'll comment out the film ID descending and then close the double quotes at the end of Oscar wins descending. So I'm still asking for 1% of the rows. If I head back to the menu sheet and I click the run query button again, once again, I get the 12 films in the top 1% based on the Oscar wins field. If I change my query to ask for the top 2%, so I'm just going to say select top 2%, and then I head back to the, the, uh, the menu sheet and click my run query button again. In fact, before I do that, I'm just going to delete all but the menu sheet just to tidy things up a little bit. So if I click the run query button, this time I return more than the expected 24. I return 27 results. And that's because after the 24th film, which is Terminator 2 Judgment Day in this list, which apparently was nominated for, for four Oscars, but very cleverly won six. Um, that is a deliberate mistake, by the way, just in case you were uh, before anybody pointed out. So there are three results tied for the same value as the 24th film in that list. So ties affect the results even when you're using the percent uh, keyword as well. If we wanted to exclude the tied results, then we can use the same technique we've just used to exclude tied results earlier. If I head back to the Visual Basic Editor and I'll take away the closed double quote and take away the comment out character, and then we can reintroduce the film ID sort order so that when I go back to the menu sheet and I run this query again, this time I've only got 24 results, this time sorted um, by, based on the Oscar wins and by the film ID. Just to finish off the video, it's worthwhile talking briefly about selecting percentages of rows from smaller data sets. If we head back to the movies workbook and have a look on the film years worksheet, we've got a variety of smaller tables, each consisting of just 10 rows. These are all labeled using range names. So for example, I could select the film's 2019 range and that refers to that specific set of 10 rows there. I'm just going to copy that range name to the clipboard and then head back to my visual basic editor. And I'm going to modify my query entirely. So I'm going to change this so that it says select top 1% of everything from, not the film table, but that film's 2019 range name. I'm then going to take away the order by clause entirely. There's so few films in there, it's not really worth ordering them. So selecting 1% of 10 should give me one tenth of a row of data. But of course, I can't return a tenth of a row of data into a workbook or into a worksheet. So what happens is, the one tenth gets rounded up to the next available whole number. So if I head back to the menu sheet and I click run query, although I should only be returning one tenth of a row, I get one full row. Now that remains true. If I go all the way up to 10%, so of course 10% of 10 would be one full row. If I go back to my menu sheet and I run that one again, I get that one single row again. As soon as I exceed 10%, if I go up to 11%, that would give me one full row and one tenth of the next row. But again, because I can't return a tenth of a row, if I head back to the menu sheet and run my query, that returns two rows, and that will remain true up to and including 20%. Uh, you probably get the idea at this point, I'm sure I don't need to, uh, to elaborate, but up to 20% gives you two. And as soon as I exceed 20%, which will give me the next portion of the next row, that will return the full next row. 
So there we go, those are some of the basic techniques we can use to select the top n rows from a table. In the next video in the series, we're going to be looking briefly at the distinct keyword, which allows you to return a unique set of values from a column or a table. So I hope you're looking forward to that one. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.